In this last presentation related to crashing, I will look deeper into the final result. We will see how we, the final network schedule looks like. And the next thing we do is to draw the curve which gives us the relationship between duration and cost of the project. Like I said before, we have now all paths crashed. The final duration of the project is 10 periods. We crashed activity A with three period, up to three periods, so with four periods basically. C and G we didn't crash at this moment, but we can still crash them, but they will not have an effect on the duration of the project. D we crashed to two periods, F to five periods and E to three periods. In summary, we can say that the relationship that we have between the cost and the duration, a duration of 20 periods gives us a cost of 67k, 18 periods we have 68k, for 14 periods we have 72k, for 11 periods we have 76.5k, and for 10 periods we have 83.3k. Let's put that in a graph so you can see clearly what is the effect of the duration on the cost of the project. <coughs> this is the final result of our exercise. We see this curve in function of the time, where we have the time linked to the cost of the project. So the more we crash, the more expensive the project will be. But we also see that once we crash up to 10 periods, further crashing, crashing the remaining activities, the ones that we didn't crash yet, will not give any extra advantage. It will only create slack on the other parts which are not critical anymore. Now, what can we do with this? Well, when we have a project and we have this relationship, when our customer tells us, well, we want to have this project finished in 16 periods, Basically, we can say 16 periods, well, this will be the cost of the project. We can add our fixed costs and our profit margin to give an offer to the customer. This is one of the elements for which we can use crashing. Another element, and we spoke about this in the first presentation about crashing, where we, in fact, are trying to find the economical solution. When our project is too late, we may have fines that we have to pay. We have to pay the project management team. Another thing is when we are reducing the project up to a certain time, it will give us an advantage that we will get rewards. What we here have to do is to find out what is the effect of the reduction of the fine and the reduction of the project management itself and does it compensate the cost for crashing in that case we will keep on crashing as long as the total cost of the project reduces the same thing with the rewards is it worthwhile to crash we have to see what's the effect of the rewards the additional money we get in fact it means that the cost of the project for us will be lower and the effect on the project management team. When these two compensate each other, when they compensate the cost for crashing, we continue crashing and we find an economical solution. Crashing is not so difficult, but it becomes complex because we have different steps that we have to do, we have to redo, and project management software, of course, offers this possibility. It's also a typical application in linear programming where you can find the optimal solution when you are crashing. This was all I wanted to say about crashing. There are other topics we will talk about in the following presentations. I hope to see you there. Thank you and bye-bye.